Uh, so I see a lot of post-op patients there. And then I also do some hospice. Oh, oh, hospice. <laughs> you go, I'll just follow you. I'm good. <laughs> It's Kara Dixon with Candid with Kara, and today I am in Virginia Beach with Jen Kiggins. Now, Jen, can you tell me what you're running for? Yes, yeah, so I'm running for the seventh district state senate. Who is Jen? <laughs> Who is Jen? Well, that's the question of the day. Uh, so, a little bit about me, as I'm sure a lot of a lot of your viewers are aware already. I was a Navy helicopter pilot. That was kind of my first career calling. I flew H-46s here in Norfolk at HC-8. Uh, and then I moved to H-3s and flew search and rescue out of Oceana. So I was in the Navy a total of 10 years, deployed a couple times to the Persian Gulf, 10 of the best years of my life, met my husband in the Navy, he's an F-18 guy, and uh, then got out. after We were deploying back to back, so it was difficult with both of us being in the, in the military. I got out, started to have children, and we ended up having four children. Uh, and then I was a Navy spouse for several years. After I did that, I said, well, gosh, I need to go back to school or go back to work because being a stay-at-home mom was way too hard of a job for me. So I used my GI Bill. I went to nursing school at ODU. My mother is a nurse, my brother is a nurse. Uh, I had grandparents that I admired and made a big impact on my life. Uh, one grandfather had Alzheimer's disease, uh, was in a nursing home. Uh, and I just felt like, what you know, what can we do to help him? So I went to ODU and got my bachelor's degree and then went to Vanderbilt to study to become a geriatric nurse practitioner. So I've worked in skilled rehab where I work at EBMS now, taking care of post-op patients. I also work long-term care, nursing facility. We have a dementia floor that I help take care of. And I also work in the memory clinic at EBMS. So we see people with cognitive impairments and their caregivers and we really help them uh, to work through that disease. And I also do a little bit in primary care, which I'm a big, just a big believer in primary preventative care. So, so it's great and still just very busy mom and I assistant coach of the track and cross country team. Got a cross country coming up today. I drive a carpool. I like to make chocolate chip cookies on the side. So and I like to run. You do a lot. I'm very busy, love to stay busy. That's my thing. <laughs> this is how we door knock in case you're wondering. We take our bikes on the road with us and um, we, ride all over town. Okay, so you want to warm up? I don't want, we got to go around <laughs> these cars. I don't want you to like, you want to warm up? I know up how to street? ride a bike. Adrian does You sure? Okay. We'll get out of your way. Got it. <laughs> and then the brakes back. Okay. Try not to run into the minivan. Don't worry, I'm coming. I'll run my husband bike. You go like every day or? It's my, yeah, it's my mental health treatment of choice. <laughs> like I have to run. Yeah. I've been a bit of a closet politician for years, but just uh, watching the, the political arena and was frustrated. Yelled at my television a lot uh, with my husband's like, are you going to keep yelling at the TV or are you going to get off the couch and do something about it? So uh, just frustrated with the climate and how there's a lot of negativity. Feels like people aren't listening to each other, aren't working together. In the military, we always did the mission as a team. We didn't care about your your race, your religion, your gender, your political affiliation. We just worked together and did what we needed to do. So I'm hoping to bring some of that to, to Richmond. And uh, and I think just with my background, being a veteran, that's important to people. And then just being a mom and a regular everyday citizen, and then also a healthcare provider, because healthcare is always just very important and a hot topic here in Virginia. Our first question is, what is the biggest issue the Commonwealth is facing? So in my opinion, the biggest issue for the state of Virginia is health care. It always is number one in the polls, and I think it's just on everyone's minds these days. There are people that are just paying hundreds, thousands even of dollars for health care on a monthly basis. The cost of prescription drugs is too high. You know, there's we have passed this Medicaid expansion is here, so my job is a primary care nurse practitioner. So I want to give good preventative care to people now so that we can prevent other healthcare costs in the future that when they have chronic and acute problems that we need to treat. What do you hope to accomplish if you're elected? What I hope to accomplish is in my perfect world, I would love to change the atmosphere of politics. It's so frustrating to watch. I think for most of us, we hear it at the doors all the time. People are just frustrated with the climate. I'm a problem solver and I like to listen to people. I'm a good listener and a fast learner. So that's what I do for a daily basis. I, you know, a patient comes in my room, I listen. How are we going to work together to solve your healthcare problems? So I'd like to just bring 
just bring a new, a new energy, a new enthusiasm, a new fresh face, just a new way to do it. I only know how we do it in the military and then I use what I learned there in my healthcare field. So just uh, helping, hoping to be a problem solver and to, to change the political climate. In addition to doing that, I also would like to just be an advocate for mental health. We talk about mental health a lot and how we need better availability, accessibility for mental health, but really having someone who can understand, again, the challenges of diagnosing and treating and follow up for that patient population, and then also being an advocate for, prime, for mental health and behavioral health providers. Because I feel like we talk mental health, but someone has to provide that mental health. So who's going to do that, and what can we do to ensure that those providers are there just to, to implement better health care for Virginia? What can Virginians do to improve the, the state personally? Like, what can they yeah. do in their communities and their homes to make... Well, this year, you know what the biggest thing is that they can do to, to at least keep Virginia the great state that it is? They can get out there and vote. I'm a big believer just in voting. Every time we have the opportunity, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's given to us. You know, we live in this great democracy, so let's exercise that right to vote. Uh, so, you know, as women, I think that's great. You know, we can, we can all vote. You know, my son just turned 18. He just voted for the first time in June for his mom. That was great. But uh, just get out there and vote, you know, for uh, this is a big election year for Virginia. So it, it's an off election year. There's not a presidential election or anything like that. But people just need to understand the gravity just of what's at stake here in Virginia. We have that one seat majority in the House and the Senate for the Republican side. So it's a very important, important election year. So I just want people to get out there and vote. What is your favorite home cooked meal? <laughs> so this is the part of the interview where I get to put in my little my little uh, spiel for healthy living. My <laughs> my favorite meal, honestly, is salmon. I love a good salmon with rice and broccoli, and I sprinkle a little cheddar cheese on that. I uh, I like to use a little seasoning, some dill weed on it. Um, just bake the salmon. Uh, I, I really, truly, you can tell the running, you know, the running, but also healthy eating. I mean, yeah. think you are what you eat. So. Uh, now, I don't always eat healthy. I have a weakness, which is cake. <laughs> I, I think that's everyone's weakness. I love weakness. cake, so <laughs> I, have, I can eat cake and cupcakes just all day long. That is, and milk. I'm a cake and milk girl, yeah. so yeah, that's, but, uh, but I do try to at least keep my meals healthy so that I can you at can least splurge a little. <laughs> moderation. <laughs> but everything in moderation, you know about that. So, wait, so when you were growing up, what did you think you were going to be? <laughs> so I thought that I was going to be a director on Broadway. And I, I lived in a neighborhood which was great, lots of kids, and uh, I was the oldest of my three siblings, so I would get my siblings and their friends and somehow my friends uh, together, and we would put on plays for our parents and the other neighbors that around Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I'd play the piano and we would sing, and, and I thought being a director was just the best thing ever. I'm gonna be a director on Broadway. so. Uh, it didn't pan out that way, and it's, <laughs> so I think that's the beginning of my leadership skills. Yeah. Maybe was just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, telling all my friends what to do around the around the stage that we set up in our family room. But uh, but I love I love as a little girl, and my grandparents who lived in New near New York. We would go and just see Broadway shows, and I just thought that was awesome. So a real appreciation for for that. But things went in a different direction. But I, you know, it, it's all turned out how it was supposed <laughs> to be. So <laughs> if you could meet anyone in history, who would yeah. it be? So, really, maybe a group of people. Um, if I had to pick one, I would probably say James Stockdale. But um, but the whole group of people who are prisoners of war, from, of prisoners of war from the Vietnam era, those people I have just read book after book after book, and uh, I really admire. And Love and War is my one of my favorite books written by Admiral Stockdale and his wife. Uh, and I just have so much respect and admiration for that group of prisoners of war from the Vietnam era, because. Their books just demonstrate their love for country and truly what they were willing to sacrifice for this country. These are the people that made our country great. Uh, so just to spend time with them, I mean, uh, and I, with a lot of them have passed. Um, I did meet Jim Stockdale very briefly in the commissary one time at, in San Diego, uh, but uh, I really would just love to sit down with them and, and thank them and uh, just just tell them how much, you know, I'm thankful the country is grateful, thank you for what you did, because they spent years just mm -hmm. uh, sticking out truly out of love of country, so I appreciate that. Just 
get out there and vote November 5th. It's a big election for Virginia. So thanks so much for watching today. And everybody go out and get out and go for a run. And uh, thanks <laughs> for bike. having me. Or bike. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I yeah, appreciate no, it. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, have a great day. Take care. Here in 1996. Okay. Uh, was my first duty station here at Norfolk. So.